Greetings, Flea Mechanics Enthusiast. Engineer Leo here. How are you doing? I hope you're doing fine because today we're going to talk about how to completely and successfully fail at CFT, at Computational Fluid Dynamics. So this is, video will be based on a series of notes by Professor Poinsot from Université de Toulouse, from University of Toulouse, well, he says the following. Sometimes you cannot avoid being successful, fortunately, but in CFD, in computational fluid dynamics, if you're careful enough, you can make sure to fail totally, not only for you, but also for people working with you. The small texts provide rules to make sure that anyone giving a large CFD project will be reasonably sure to fail. Yay! Okay, so let's start by rule one. Bruh. Always change two things at the same time in your code. If you need to change something in the numerical method and some submodel, it is absolutely necessary to do the two changes at the same time. This way, when the code will fail, you will be unable to say why. Yay! Roll number two. Bruh. Always avoid having a version of your code that works. Indeed, if your code works and if you do not apply rule number one, you can every time you add something to it, determine right away whether it works or not. Very dangerous path to work success and we don't want that, we don't want success. Same idea if your Mr. Smith gives you his code, do not try to use it as it is to see if it works. Why would you waste time on such a stupid test? This Smith has certainly done it. Change two or three models right away. Add a few Python or C++ routines of your own before you test the code. By the way, do not forget to tell Mr. Smith. Gee, your code was so old. How could you work with this? Roll number three. Ah, bruh. Debugging is what CFD is about. Five minutes to modify your code, five months to find why it doesn't work anymore. The very important thing is here, never come back to a previous version. The reason why the code does not work now is not the lines you change, it is the lines you haven't changed yet. Yeah. Rule number four. Bruh. The first three rules have no real interest if you save the versions of your code, or worse, if you use CVS or SVN. Only the feeble CFD guide needs this kind of safety net. The real artists don't. Remember, CFD stands for Color Fluid Dynamics, not Computational Fluid Dynamics, okay? If you have a copy of your previous version and the present version does not work, you might be able to apply rule number one and compare the two versions with a diff line. And maybe even to find why the code does not work. On the other hand, if you never save previous versions and apply rules number one to three with enthusiasm, your codes will, without any doubt, become total mess. And that's what we want. We want mess. After a while, they will not even compile, and the best destination for them will be the trash can. Yeah, let's trash everything out. Imagine Mr. Smith. When you will see him again after two months and say, Oh, well, could you send me the version of your code you sent me two months ago? I would like to um, compare with my own present version. Oh, oh yeah. This is 
stupid Smith who does not apply the present rules will still have a working version and a big smile. At this point, tell him you have multiple new ideas now and your next version will be definitely the best. Rule number five. Bruh. Refuse all simple test cases. If someone asks you to compute a laminar flow in a tube, say, no need to do this, we have an analytical solution for this, why waste CPU time? Indeed, you should never compare your code results with analytical solutions. If you do, there will be no excuse for your code if results do not match. Worse, if you might improve your code. It is better to avoid this and to stick only to complex turbulent flows where you can say when CFD results do not match experiments. We all agree that this will be the case though. Um, probably this is due to the fact that the smallest case of turbulence were not really isotropic. Yay. Well, rule number six. Bruh. CFD guys are very lucky. They can fill any machine by refining the mesh they use. So please do it. Never do CFD with small meshes. Start right away with the largest mesh that can fit on the machine. This has multiple advantages. First, the code will take much more CPU time so that tests will become very difficult. Second, this will also slow down the machine so that the other users will also have problems to work. When this happens, find ways to block the users by requesting special batch queries for you so you can completely block the machine with your runs. Uh, explain that you need the whole machine because you're the only one doing serious CFT. Okay, bruh. If enough users behave this way, you can not only be sure to fail, but also help the whole team to fail. Yeah. Think also of the discussions at the coffee break when you would tell Smith that he has to wait for you to finish your runs before having access to the computer. Awesome. Rule number seven. Bruh. Plot everything color. Even y equals fx curves. Never use symbols on your own curves. If asked, say black and white plus symbols is for old guys. Color is everywhere now. And never add labels or legends or titles. Normally these nice pictures, especially green and yellow, will look great on your screen and only in your screen, after photocopy, the curve will disappear. This way, discussions with those who could help you because they understand CFT will be impossible. And you will also avoid publication in journal in cases where you would have forgotten to apply the other rules of this text. And we don't want to publish our scientific research anywhere, right? Rule number Eight. Bruh. Never use any debugging tool. Never check anything. If you change something, start from the solution you did it right the first time and do not check. Do not add diagnostics in your code, like checking that you conserve global mass or enthalpy. If you ask why you do not do it, say, well, if it was useful, the guys before me would have done it. All this information would only help you to understand what your code is really doing. Which you do not need because, yeah, you know, it, it should do, isn't it? Well, rule number nine. Bruh. Do not invest money in post-processing softwares. Do not write scripts that make post-processing fast or simple. Use different zooms and scales on each figure. If possible, never watch the fields produced by your codes. This could only show you a brick problem at an expected place and ways to fix the problem. 
and of course we don't want to fix anything. Rule number 10. Bruh. Do not re do not organize the directories where you run the code. Better use only one directory for all files. Do not write anywhere what to do or why or what your results are. The unique directory is great. This way the results of run n erase or even get better mixed with results of run n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on. Finding out what's going on on becomes really exciting. And please do not use names like velocity at point one. The name A000001 is much better. Of course, you will know what this is, right? And imagine how fun it is to have almost the same names for all the files. You can also use Toto as a name, but I recommend new. This is a good one. Well, an additional rule, the rule number 11. Bruh. Never leave your screen. Do not read any paper. This is lost time. What is important is your next run because this is the one that will save the day. So I hope you guys enjoy this 11 rules how to successfully fail at CFD and do instead of doing computational fluid dynamics doing color fluid dynamics okay see you next time bye Bruh.